All right, so today we're going to be talking about enums or enumerations. And this is a way of storing a series of values. Let's say these ones, for example. So I have these three strings and I want to use these three strings again and again at different parts in my program. I don't want to have to write them all again. So I'm going to store them somewhere in a variable that I can access and then bring them up whenever I need. So JavaScript does not truly have enums. It doesn't truly have enumerations. A lot of programming languages do, but that doesn't mean that we can't create them and we can mimic the behavior of an enumeration in JavaScript. So the first approach is what I've done right here, creating an array. The problem with doing this is if I want to use one of these things in my code, it means here's my variable. I have to remember what number zero was or what number one or what number two were. So, you know, it's bad because humans are bad at remembering things. So that's sort of our first approach is doing an array, but it's not really an enum and it's got the weakness, the problem with memory. So what else can we do? Well, we can create an object. If we do that, we can say const errors equals an object instead. We can take these same values, I put them in the object, and then I give them keys. So instead of using numbers, I can say, hey, I'm going to create something here called bad number. And that's going to be the label that I use for this thing. And this one's going to be uh, mom error. And we'll call this one data error. So we've got these three property names in my object. Now, if I want to access one of these things, I can do it one of two ways. I can say errors dot bad number, or, and we can throw that in a console.log or use it however we want. We've got that. Or the alternative, we can use the square bracket syntax. We can say errors, and then in the square brackets, which one do we want to use? And you'll see, like VS Code or whatever your IDE is, they're probably going to have code complete for this. So by giving them labels, it means that I don't have to remember what each one was. I just have to remember these three labels. So the keys inside of our variable, those become labels that are much easier for us to remember if we've got a good naming convention. Okay, so we're almost at what an enumeration is here. The problem is I can still change this. Now I've used const, which is great. Const is going to prevent me from doing something like this. I can't say errors equals a brand new object. That's going to cause a JavaScript error. It's going to say, no, no, you cannot reassign to a const. But it doesn't stop me from doing errors.badNumber equals new value. That'll just change the value. It replaces this string with the new one that I've got right here. So I don't want that. So that's where we are right now with our object. So still OK, but not really what we're looking for with a true enum. What we're going to do is we're going to take this object and we want to prevent anybody from being able to change it. I don't want to change these keys. I don't want to change the values. I don't want anybody to be able to add new things into here or remove things from the object. So we'll start off with const errors, and that's going to prevent the reassignment. Then we're going to use object.freeze. So this is a built-in method that belongs to the object object in JavaScript, and it prevents exactly what we were describing. It prevents changes to the data properties. So sorry, the property descriptors. Property descriptors are properties on your properties. So this is an object inside of object freeze. This is a property. And a property descriptor are the properties about that property to say, hey, here's the default value. Here's a getter or a setter. This thing can be changed. It can be written to, or it can't be written to, or it can't be changed. So these are the property descriptors. And if you're looking for more details on that, there's a link up at the top there to the video that I've done on property descriptor. Okay, and so with this object of freeze, now what we've done is we have created for ourselves something that is an enumeration. 
it is going to allow us to access these things using this syntax, same as we did up here with just the plain object. So I can do the exact same thing here. We can say console.log, just like that. It's going to write it out in the console for us or use it someplace else in our code. So where are these things useful? Well, you can use them when creating errors. If you want to have different types of error objects, this can be the message that is built into it. Uh, if you want to have callbacks and you want to return different things from a function, uh, let me just do a, a very simple sort of pseudocode example here. If I've got a function called some process, I'm going to pass into this function two callbacks. So let's call them good and bad. And these are going to be two different functions. If the thing inside of here works the way I want, I'm going to call this function and I'm going to pass it a value. And if it doesn't work the way I want, I'm going to call this callback. If you want a video about callback functions, there's a link up at the top there as well. And down in the description, I've got the links to those videos too. So the good and the bad, those are my two callback functions. And let's just do something basic here. Let's do a random number rounded off to either zero or one. So we'll do math.rounded off and math.random. There we go. So we're going to generate a random number between zero and one, round it off so it becomes actually zero or one. And if the result is one, that's my good. And I will pass not results. Let's call it result. There we go. I'm going to call the good function to say, hey, this thing worked the way I wanted it to, else something's gone wrong. Now I could just call the bad function and we could target one of these things. We can use that errors.bad number. There we go. Code complete. Help me finish that. So that's one version, or we can even wrap this inside of an error object. So we can say, here's going to be my error. That'll be new error. And we pass in as the message one of those things from here. So we've got bad number, data error, mum error, whichever one it is that we want to use. And then we can call the bad where we pass that error back to it. So there's going to be an actual error object that is passed to this function. Or alternatively, if you don't want to do that, you can even throw the error object. And then when you call some process, as long as you've wrapped that in a try catch, you're able to throw the error back and then it's going to be able to tell which error it was because. So if I do a try catch like this, the error is going to be caught here. So if I call some process, here's my two functions a and b. When this runs, if it works, it's going to do this function. When it fails, I'm throwing the error. I wasn't calling the bad function. If I throw the error, this line's going to throw an error that's going to be caught right here. And then we can look and see what that error is. We can say, okay, you know what? If, or let's do a switch case, we can take a look at the error and take a look at its message. And then when looking at the messages, I can again use my enumeration. So if the message that came back from in here is error dot bad number, then I can decide what I want to do. Else, if it is, sorry, not error, but errors dot data error, do whatever you like, and so on. So we have. We've got the error that's being returned from up here, thrown, caught, read, and then depending on what the value is, whichever one of these it matches, this is what we're going to do. So there's just some very simple little examples of things that you can do with enumerations and how we can create them like this with the object freeze. So I hope that helps you out. I hope that helps you improve the way you think about JavaScript and how you're using different values. If you've got a whole bunch of values that you want to reuse in your code, think about how you're organizing that data. 
If you have any questions, feel free to leave those in the comments. I answer as many as I have time for. And as always, thanks for watching.